welcome to this tutorial on our paranasal sinuses, named paranasal due to them running alongside our nasal cavity. And before we get started learning about the sinuses, let's sort out our directional terminology. So we have an anterior view of our skull, as well as an anterior view of our head, with the sinuses are shown outlined, and a right lateral view of our head as well. And I'll just uh, show up quickly here all the sinuses that we would see in our skull as well. So the first mistake you want to avoid making when talking about the sinuses is that they are part of the nose. They're not part of your nose. They are part of five separate bones of your skull and we'll talk about each one in a moment. So there are five bones and they each house sinuses. The sinuses themselves are hollow and lined with a mucosa. They're also going to be filled with air. Well, most of the time they're going to be filled with air unless there's an overproduction of uh, mucus from that mucosa lining. And that lining being a membrane that is uh, capable of producing that mucus. They'll also all be connected connected so that they can uh, drain away the mucus that they produce. Now the first sinus we'll have a look at is our frontal sinuses. I'm just outlining the frontal sinuses here, located in our frontal bone. And we can also see a, a small portion of it from the right lateral view here as well. Our second set of sinuses will be our ethmoid air cells or ethmoidal air cells so that's our ethmoidal sinus and that's this one here that I'm just outlining in green and we can see uh, from the right lateral view our ethmoidal air cells actually extend uh, quite a way backward so they extend posteriorly Next is our sphenoid sinus or sphenoid sinuses, once again named after the bone they're housed in. So with these sinuses are quite easy to name, they're all just named after the bone they come from and I'm outlining them now in purple. So once again more posterior to the ethmoidal air cells and that's our sphenoid sinus. Our next and largest are the maxillary sinuses and we classify those as two because our uh, maxilla or our maxillary bone is fused into uh, two units. So the two maxillary sinuses there, and they are by far the largest of the sinuses we have in the skull. So now that we know the name and position of all of our sinuses, let's talk a bit more about what their actual function is. And if we have a look up on the screen, I'm just gonna show you now that there's small openings are between all of these sinuses that's going to connect them all. So it's going to connect them to our nasal cavity. And that's why most people immediately think of the nose when they are told about the sinuses. So they all connect, I'm just drawing lines now between all of these sinuses to show that they're connecting to our nasal cavity. And I'll do the same thing down here on the right lateral. So we can see that all of these sinuses here are connected by these small uh, holes and small openings. And the reason they're all connected is so that we can drain them. I said before, uh, they produce mucus from that mucosal lining. So we need to be able to drain off that mucus when there's too much. And a secondary feature will be that they can warm and humidify air that we uh, inhale and just simply uh, due to the fact that they are uh, cavities within the skull they're also going to decrease the weight of our skull. Another purpose of these sinuses is that they will actually increase the airflow we have within the nasal cavity allowing our voice itself to resonate much more. Now let's actually focus a bit on what's going on to give us a blocked nose or uh, that blocked nose feeling when we have a cold. Part of your body's defense against microbes is the mucus lining on your epithelial surfaces. 
and this is going to uh, allow us to trap and remove bacteria. If you happen to uh, come across a certain bacteria that's going to cause an immunological response in your body, one of the things that will happen is your sinuses will increase the production of mucus to help trap more bacteria and fight that infection. And if these uh, air spaces fill up with mucus, our voice will no longer be able to uh, resonate, resulting in your voice sounding uh, like this when you have a cold. So put simply, the immune response is that mucus will trap your bacteria and an infection of bacteria will lead to elevated production of that mucus, which is going to result in your blocked nose. So I'll just quickly draw that up on the screen as well, that when we have a blocked nose, our sinuses are going to be filled with mucus. So we can see our maxillary sinuses here, filling up with mucus, as well as our sphenoidal and ethmoidal and frontal, and it's going to result in a leaky nose. And I'll show it here on the skull as well. So excess mucus, results in us having to blow our nose. And that's everything we need to know about our paranasal sinuses. I hope this video has been helpful to you. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all again soon.